Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 18th of January 2020. I am making brain, I will be your host. We're going to go around the room and talk about hyper initiatives, other initiatives, parking lot Q&A, you know the drill by now. Uh, the attendance is slightly down today, uh, because it's a holiday in the US. Um, so, you know, happy holidays, these people taking time off, uh, good for you. Anyway, let us start. So high priority initiatives. First thing is upcoming in ship releases. Uh, so I can talk about JSIPFS uh, 53 shipped uh, at the end of last week, uh, which is super exciting. It has the experimental gRPC web server in it, web server, web RPC, oh, bleh, gRPC web over web sockets server, which means that we have now true full duplex bi-directional streaming for IPFS ad, uh, which is exciting. And we'll roll that out to the other uh, streaming methods as soon as we can. Uh, do check the IPFS blog uh, for the skinny on that. The, the post hasn't been published yet. It will be published tomorrow um, on the 19th. It also comes with uh, libp2p 0.30, which is very exciting. And there's lots of uh, improvements there. That is that. Anything else upcoming or shipped? Radical. Moving on. Binning services. Yeah, so, um, excuse me. Uh, last week uh, we had sort of like a pull request uh, merge fest on the Go IPFS site in preparation of. Uh, in preparation for 0.80 our release candidate too uh, and a bunch of uh, pull requests related to pinning services uh, a bunch of uh, pull requests uh, related to remote command pin remote commands landed um, or are very close to uh, landing um, we are working on uh, automated uh, pinning of mfs root uh, that's still being blocked by uh, some interrupt issues between how replace command works, uh, how our CI tests work, and how Pinata is actually implementing the API. Uh, so we are testing it both on the CI and uh, end to end with Pinata. Uh, I think we've figured out a way to move forward with uh, MFS pinning. Uh, I know Peter is not around, so I, uh, I'm i not sure what's the uh, current plan, but I, I think if it takes too much time to stabilize this, we will uh, descope it. Uh, so we'll see tomorrow when uh, everyone uh, from US is uh, back. Uh, are we including uh, MFS pinning in RC2 or not? Um, so stay tuned, I guess. Cool. Uh, next up is local pinning, uh, which says no update. Uh, data transfer speed improvements. Uh, the team are not back yet, so there's no update there. Uh, next one is JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so last week uh, uh, finished the PR with the benchmark setup and also collected a bunch of metrics with basically different uh, network scenarios and scales. The results seem reasonable. And depending on the scale of the network, we will need to deploy probably a cluster of Rendezvous servers, as we already anticipated. Uh, so I also created a PR with an example of using a Rendezvous in JSLP2P. And uh, now, while I will wait on reviews for that, I will start working on the connection manager overall. Uh, I need to double check if the previous plan uh, proposed it, this still makes sense uh, and start working on that after uh yeah and uh, probably i will be spending some time also working on changing the jesley p2p testing setup to that it up and also uh, because we currently uh, can't run it on uh, node 15 because of uh, the way we have uh, uh, we test our modules like the dht and pub sub uh, and we use peer dependencies for that and now they are installed uh, automatically with Node 15 and it is causing some trouble. So I will try to also get that done this week. Uh, 
NPM does like to keep things interesting. Uh, next up is bidirectional streaming and streaming errors in the browser. This has shipped. It has shipped. We can totally remove this from the uh, notes going forward. Very exciting. Uh, JavaScript DHT, no updates. Uh, I still need to go back and look at all the feedback on the PR around the um, uh, nut hole punching. But I think I'm going to, like this week, I'm going to try mostly on concentrating on helping Hugo and Arakli, uh drag the type stuff over the line uh, so that we can stop, just stop with the types and start with the features. Um, that is not. That marks the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, next up is the other initiatives, the speak of the devil. And it shall appear TypeScript integration. Who can talk about TypeScript integration? Uh, I can talk about the LPTP side. Uh, we got our uh, LPTP build got broken last Friday after an update in the TypeScript types uh, for nodes in the event emitter. I was talking with Hugo and seeing uh, what we could do uh, in the meantime while uh, that gets eventually fixed upstream. And so we basically now have uh, the event emitter types locally in JSLPTP, and we already released it so that the build is not broken anymore. And uh, eventually we will probably think about using emittery instead of event emitter, because this will also be a problem uh, with Webpack 5. So yeah, probably we will look at uh, in moving to that. Oh, and we also have the um, data store PRs. We're all updated to the new config, to the new Azure, and everything bubbled up uh, from each other. Uh, also, this needed to like IPFS utils, I think. So everything is up to date. It needs the final reviews so we can get the IPFS repo types done finally. Yes, I must have been doing reviews, nothing other than that, in terms of TypeScript. Oh, and uh, we need, I think it's, uh, I don't know which one of you, Gonzalo or Alex, is the maintainer of the air code, but we have a PR there pending. And I think we have permissions on that repo. So we could kind of unblock that PR. Yeah, so I saw the PR and I responded. I had some comments on it, like pretty much as soon as it was open, but never heard anything back. Oh, so it's Gonzalo's fault. I mean, we're a team. I must have it's missed it. I'll look at it. We succeed together and we fail together. There is no, there is no individual who's responsible. Yeah, no, no finger pointing. You just pointed at the notes in my screen. It's the notes' hey. fault. <laughs> just like just pointing to the offside. Anyway, it, it's good. I was not aware that I had to do something there. So take a look. Uh, next up is Badger two, no three support. Um. No updates there, just waiting to see if uh, we want to actually go and create a new repo for that. Um, I think there's some feedback that uh, Adin was looking for in there, but uh, but we haven't done anything. So that's it. Just some, we're waiting on some decisions. Fair. Uh, uh, traversal. Yeah, so Arsh got a proof of concept working like on Friday of TCP hole punching with simultaneous connect in Go Um That was against a AWS EC2 machine talking to his node at home on a laptop. So that worked and he's gonna continue work this week on quick side of things um, and also work on finishing up the multi-stream 1.0 extension for that. So I think he might be a little blocked on reviews um, from Steven. So we'll try to 
poke for a review there. Cool. Uh, Unix vs v1.5 and CarPFS. Don't think there's an update here. Uh, GuidePFS GC improvements. Um, continuing to to do some work on um, on that. It looks like you know, we can have um, we can delete uh, nodes and, uh, without causing any catastrophic damage. So uh, looking at the performance, I didn't. Uh, we don't have a lot of any any uh, new development there in terms of anything that's going to be put into. Uh, anything, any kind of release or uh, PR anytime soon. Um, so it's just continuing, uh, continuing work that's done uh, on a little bit of performance, but probably we'll see something uh, end of this week, I would anticipate in terms of a prototype. Nice. Uh, do you want to skip straight on to the GarPFS migrations rework? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Migrations are are uh, all um, ready for PR. The first one that needs to be um, there are there are there are PRs out there for them. The first one that needs to be completed is the review of the uh, distributions PR because everything else uh, depends on the distributions being set up in a particular manner that that, that, that those are, and then everything else will if assuming that goes through everything else will be ready to merge at this point uh, pending any any issues that come up in reviewing all that code because they've com been completely overhauled so those are all ready it's just a matter of somebody having the time to review them uh, because they're a little bit lower priority right now fair enough uh ipfs pops up api revamp uh, yeah, so the background story here is uh, Streetbox had an issue with uh, stalling pop-up subscriptions in JS IPFS HTTP client, uh, which was due to node fetch bug that I submitted. There's a patch now that fixes it, uh, but that also led to the discussion, maybe API should slightly be revamped so that errors are harder to miss or connections closing are harder to miss uh, that I think was approved for implementation. So I had been working on that, um, which quickly during implementation, I realized that I'm basically reinventing uh, web readable streams API that is already there implementing browsers uh, to a larger degree. So I pivoted slightly to polyfilling readable streams API in node and using native ones in browsers. Uh, also using extension of native ones because native ones in browsers don't fully implement the spec yet. Uh, specifically async iteration is missing and few other APIs, but those are easy to add as a, like a subclass of readable streams. And there's a link in the notes to the libraries that kind of puts it all together and tries to give you readable streams across the board. And that would be used then to give the pop sub API or not pop sub. Subscription API. Hmm, interesting. Because the, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I need to read it. Last time somebody rewrote streams again, we ended up with pool stream, uh, which were good for the time. Yeah, so idea is that it's you. it will be readable streams, but you don't have to know about it. You can treat it as an async trebles and but yeah, we can talk about it more if you want to offline. Cool. Next up is the memory leak in JSIPFS. Yeah, so this also came from uh, feedback from 3Box. Uh, they made an issue. Uh, they were talking about the HTTP client that is uh, the memory continues growing and shuts down the node and they need to restart and all that. So it's, it's not the HTTP server. Um, it's probably the preload or bit swap or both. So I'm currently um, doing more research and basically setting up a test bed where I can better control um, and trigger a bit swap between two nodes instead of just relying on like activating like preload and then the bit swap starts preload um, doing his, his thing with the preload nodes. Um, I'll have more info um, by the end of the week. 
I'm not sure if it's relevant or useful, but I, I remember at some one point we've added uh, like limits to how many concurrent requests can be executed as a part of preloads and delegate ones. But I, I don't think we do that like in our code. We use some library for that. It's, we don't do it where? Uh, I mean, uh, what I mean is that this memory leak, do we actually know if it's like legitimate? It's possible that it's just they have so many queued requests, it looks like memory leak because we have those limits on preload calls and uh, on the de delegated routing calls. And I think, I think Freebox was experimenting with both. So they may have a bunch of like queued things in memory. Uh, it doesn't seem to like uh, when, when I start like preloading anything, like it could be sm small blocks, could be big blocks, could be many blocks. I easily can go up to one gigabyte of RAM and never get it back. Uh, okay. If I continue to add more blocks, more blocks, it grows, 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 but it slowly comes back to one gigabyte, but never goes uh, uh, below one gigabyte. So okay. something maybe, is- Yeah, may, maybe unrelated, yeah, okay. Yeah. That was the end of the other initiatives. Uh, does anybody got anything for design review proposal? Rockers and asks. Questions. There is one thing in the parking lot, uh, public service announcement, Brave yeah, um, one Yeah, totally. Uh, just like, uh, I think I mentioned that last week asking for uh, testing. So this is just a PSA for anyone watching this, uh, that Brave 119 will land in the stable channel this week, I think, maybe tomorrow. Uh, so that's a cool uh, milestone for us. Uh, it, it will be native support for our um, uh, URIs, which means uh, you just enter them. You don't need to enable anything. The first time you use the URI, you will have you will be able to choose. Do you want to run your own node and load content from IPFS that way, or delegate uh, resolution of uh, IPFS addresses to some trusted public gateway, and you can customize the gateway you are using. So that's the PSA. Amazing. Anything else for the parking lot? Then we are done. Thank you very much for coming. Please do fill out your uh, async updates uh, to let people know what's going on. Uh, thank you very much. This has been the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 18th of January, 2021. See you all on the internet. Bye.